Okay, this video is for my GCSE Design and Technology students. And as you can see, oh, we've got the input shaft here, which I can spin quite quickly. And then the output shaft is connected to the this rather large wheel. You'll notice, hopefully you'll notice, that the input spins at a much faster RPM revolutions per minute than does the output. That relationship between the rotational velocity of the input and the rotational velocity of the output can be used to calculate the velocity ratio. Now let's assume that I had some tool to measure the speed, the rotational velocity of the input and the output. I would easily be able to calculate the velocity ratio because the vo velocity ratio is going to be the input's rotational velocity over the output rotational velocity. So let's assume that this input was spinning at 100 rpm and the output was spinning at 20 rpm and I would have a velocity ratio of 5 over 1 or I could express it as 5 to 1. In other words, meaning that this, the input, spins five times for every turn of the output. So that's quite straightforward, isn't it? Remember, velocity ratio. Okay, so it's just a uh, ratio of the two velocities. What I find confuses students more often is that we often don't know the actual rotational velocity of either the input or the output but we need to calculate the velocity ratio. So how can you calculate a velocity ratio if you don't know the velocities? Well, that's actually quite easy. Uh, in the case of a spur gear, you just count the number of teeth on the input and the teeth on the output. And this time around, the velocity ratio will be equal to the driven teeth over the driver teeth. So if I were to calculate the driven teeth, remember this is the driver, this is where the motor is connected. If I were to calculate or count the number of teeth there, which happens, I've already done it, it's 40 teeth. And then put that over the number of teeth on the driver, this one, which is 8. You'll see we're going to come out with the same figure again, which is 5 over 1 which is a velocity ratio of 5 to 1, even though you don't know the actual velocity that this, these spindles are travelling at, you do know uh, the ratio, because the ratio is fixed, it's determined by the number of teeth. Now if you didn't know the number of teeth, but you could measure the diameter, that would be equally acceptable. So you can do, uh, in fact it doesn't even need to be the diameter, it could be radius and radius, diameter, diameter, it could be the whole circumference of one compared to the whole circumference of the other. It does not matter, so long as you use the same metrics, you'll still come out with the same figure of the velocity ratio. Okay, um, hopefully that's uh, made it a little bit clearer to you. Uh, next video up will probably be mechanical advantage.